So many times parents come to me and say, how do I handle this situation? Or my kid is doing this behavior. What do I do in that moment? How do I handle rages? How do I handle meltdowns? How do I handle disrespect? And what I would say is let's back up a little bit and let's look at the proactive tools that we have. I feel like we live in such a reactionary world. We're always reacting to things. We're reacting to people around us. We're reacting to things in the news, things that are happening in our country. And what we're not doing is looking at what can I be doing proactively instead of waiting until that moment when something happens that I don't like. So instead of saying and asking, instead of asking me the question, my kid melts down every time we go to the grocery store, how can I get them out of the grocery store? Or how can I respond when they melt down in the grocery store? That's a valid question and something that you need tools to be able to handle. But I would say, let's step back a little bit and say, what can I do before we go to the grocery store to help my child be able to handle being at the grocery store? Now for some kids, we might just have to not take them to the grocery store for a while. I remember we had one kiddo um, in our home and when we would go to the grocery store, I just like on the way home from work, I'm gonna just swing by the grocery store. I had picked her up from daycare and I thought I'm just gonna swing up, swing by the grocery store and go um, just pick up a few things that we need. And I remember walking through the grocery store and she was literally biting my knuckles and kicking me in the stomach as I was pushing her in the grocery store cart. She was only like two. What I learned from that moment was, first of all, whatever I needed was not important. I needed to go home and I needed to go back to the grocery store another time. Was it inconvenient? Absolutely. Did I wish I could have just gotten the things I needed then? Absolutely. But what I learned was that she couldn't handle going to the grocery store. There was no amount of me doing things proactively that were really going to help her. She needed a lot of regulation and she wasn't going to be able to get that for the grocery store. So some kids, that's, that's the answer is we have to avoid certain situations for a time. I like to say it's not forever. It's just for now, because for some of our kids, for a time, we have to avoid doing certain things that we'd like to do but we can't do because they can't handle it. They're not at a place that they can handle it. Some of you've probably already figured that out and already are like, yeah, I feel like we avoid everything because my kids can't handle it. So the next step after that is we've, we've taken away those things they really can't handle. Like, I mean, none of us are going to take a two-year-old into an antique store, right? We take that two-year-old into an antique store. We know that something's going to get broken. We avoid that for a while, but when they get to be three or four, then they're able to listen to us a little better and we can go through the store, maybe with them holding our hand at that point. And it's the same with our kids. If our kids have experienced trauma, then maybe they're not two and they're not at that place where, you know, you would think that they would be at two. But instead, maybe emotionally or in their ability to regulate and calm, they're more like that two-year-old that can't go to those places. But then we can use our proactive tools and we can begin to teach our kids outside of the moment what it means, what we do when we go into the grocery store. We can teach our kids um, outside of the moment how to walk holding onto the cart, how to sit in the cart, all of these things. We can practice it ahead of time. We can be proactive. We can also make sure our kids have had a good snack before we go into the grocery store so they're not trying to get every food that they see on the shelves. Um, Because I don't know about you, but when I go into the grocery store hungry, I want everything on the shelves. But I'm able to, you know, use a little bit of self-control and not get everything. My kid, we go into the grocery store and they're hungry. They're throwing everything in the cart and begging me for all the things they see. So proactively, I'm going to make sure they have a snack or something before I go into the grocery store. Now, we can apply this to so many areas where we tend to react to our kids and the way they're behaving when if we just take a few steps back and we think of those areas. So I would challenge you to think of maybe one or two areas that really frustrate you, really big behaviors that your kids are having repeatedly that you're trying so hard to figure out how do I handle this meltdown when it happens? Now, I'm not saying that just because you're proactive means you'll never have a meltdown again. You'll never have a disrespectful word spoken to you because you've proactively talked about these things. But what I am saying is that 
as you begin to look proactively at what you can do to help your kid regulate, what you can do proactively to make sure that they have nutrition and hydration, that they're well, you know, uh, they're they're well equipped for that moment when you take them into it, then your chances of having those meltdowns, having those big behaviors go way down and you're not asking the question so much, how can I handle this meltdown? But instead you start asking the question, what can I do before this moment to help make sure my kid can handle that moment? So think through, I challenge you to take two or three things that are really big behaviors and think through, what can I do before that moment to help my kids so that they can be successful. So maybe it's the grocery store, maybe it's going to school is a really big um, trigger for your child and you have meltdowns every day, every morning when they get out of bed, or maybe it's doing homework, or maybe it's um, leaving their friend's house or going from a fun activity to a not fun activity. How can we proactively help our kids manage those kinds of transitions go into those situations so that they have the tools that they need to be successful and we're not just having to figure out how to um, correct them in that moment.